Hey, what's going on? It's your boy BT, and I came here to talk some boxing with the thousands of True School Sports subscribers. What's going on, guys? Now, we are just a little bit less than a week away from the very, very, very important fight between Gennady, Triple G, Golovkin, and Daniel Jacobs with Roman Gonzalez on the undercard. Now, this video right here, not, 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 nothing news related, this is more of an opinion video. Um, Triple G, Triple G, Triple G. Either, most people on the YTBC either love, either love Triple G or you hate Triple G. There really is no in between. Now, Gennady Golovkin, hell of a fighter, hell of a fighter. Um, the fight with Daniel Jacobs will mark the 18th uh, defense of his title if he can get it. You know, it, 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 this, 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 um, Jacobs will represent number 18 for him if he can get can get it. Uh, it's been a historical title def title run. And look, people, a, a, a lot of the guys Golovkin fought, they're not big names here in the states, but they were top 10 fighters, and a lot of people discredit him. So. But this video right here is going to be is just simply this. My my why I think if he's able to, I'll say it like this: Roman, Roman Gonzalez, the current pound for pound king, is on the undercard. And when I say the current pound for pound king, I mean the current pound for pound king on most people's pound for pound lists, uh, as far as like you know publications. Not you know Andre Ward who got a gift and he's number one. No, no, no. this is actual facts. Like 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 like, Ring Magazine has Roman Gonzalez pound for pound number one. Uh, ESPN has a Roman Gonzalez pound for pound number one. Most boxing publications have Roman Gonzalez pound for pound number one, and at just justifiably so. I mean, the guy has moved up four weight classes, knocked out the champions he's fought in three of the weight classes, and just beat the biggest and, and just beat an undefeated fighter who was bigger than him and younger than him in his fourth weight class. So he deserves he deserves everything he's um you know all the accolades. But as far as Golovkin. 18, I mean, so, thus far, 17 straight title defenses, an historical middleweight run, um, and now he's fighting a guy in Daniel Jacobs, who many believe is going to be his toughest test to date. Uh, as, as, as I'm talking right now, Daniel Jacobs is the second highest rated middleweight outside of Golovkin. Um, he's number two on my magazine, Golovkin being one. And, you know, a lot, a, a couple, of, you know, and, and, and this is being objective here, if we look at Golovkin's last two opponents, right, um, Kell Brook, a welterweight, or a more of a 154-pounder, but a welterweight in the eyes of most, who moved up to middleweight. Uh, so there's him, his last fight, and then before that, Dominic Wade. So Kell Brook was a, not a natural, a natural middleweight, so people, people criticize him for that. And Dominic Wade was a mandatory opponent with who had struggled against a journeyman and Sam Solomon, with, who really could not punch hard enough to get Gennady Golovkin's respect. So Golovkin's caught a lot of flack for the fights he had in 2016. And um, some of it is justifiable, but a lot of it isn't because a lot of these guys don't want to fight the guy. Um, and because they're creating new weight classes to not fight him. So uh, what I'm saying is this. Gol Jacobs is, is going to be a huge, huge, huge fight for him because if he wins in impressive fashion like he's very capable of doing, I mean, you got to, and, and, and I'll say it like this. If he has a more dominant and sensational performance than Roman Chocolatito Gonzalez on that night, then he has to be the pound for pound number one fighter in the world. You got to elevate him to that spot because, I mean, if he's able to stop Daniel Jacobs, let, let's say he goes and he stops Daniel Jacobs, he breaks him down systematically and gets a stoppage in like the eighth or ninth round. If he does something like that, and Roman Gonzalez, Roman Gonzalez let's say, maybe struggles against his guy and gets a decision. Maybe loses a couple rounds, then you got to elevate Golovkin to number one because then you're looking at a guy who there's really no fighter in boxing right now who comparably is dominating the weight class to Gennady Golovkin. The only one that is even close is is uh, Shinsuke Yamanaka, and Shinsuke Yamanaka, you know, hasn't beaten as many top level opponents as Golovkin. Now a lot of people say that Golovkin has fought nobodies, but the fact of the matter is. Since 2012, since okay, so since his first fight in America, since the Proxy fight, he's beaten one, two, three, four, five, six. He's beaten six top ten middleweights. So Golovkin's beaten six top ten at the time he fought them. Six top ten middleweights. Jacobs will represent number seven. So that's six. That that's six potentially seven 
top 10 fighters in the weight class, and then he beat the number one welterweight. So if you want to factor that it, Kell Brook in there as well, because Kell Brook is also rated the number, number one welterweight and the world champion at welterweight as well, and he beat him undefeated, knocked, stopped him. So we're talking about eight, about about seven quality victories in the last, you know, he's only had in the, in the last, since 2012, he's had what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. So he's had fourteen fights since from from 2012 to 2016. I would say seven of them were against six of them were against top uh, ten middleweights at the time he fought them. One of them was against the number one, number one welterweight, and then there's still a couple others where it's like top fifteen guys and there are some quality wins. Like Rubio was still um, somewhat of a quality opponent when he fought him. Monroe was quality. When he fought him, so it's not like he fought bums. The only guys I really, I the only fight I really could see, you know, Adama wasn't the worst fight either. Um, you know, Golovkin to me, with the level of dominance he's shown, not just the fact that he's been knocking people out, but knocking people out um, while displaying skills, the sweet science of boxing, not getting hit. I mean, go watch the David Lemieux fight. The guy barely got touched. It was it was it was a master class performance, and a lot of people thought he would get touched up a lot more by Lemieux. And you would think with a harder puncher like Lemieux, you would get touched up more. So I think with Jacobs, for me, objectively, because I know I made my video saying that I think Jacobs has no chance, and I stand behind that. I really don't think he has a chance of beating Golovkin. I'm, I'm going to stand by that claim. He, ha the miracle man, is going to have to show me a miracle. He's going he's to have to make BT a believer, because I just don't. I think Golovkin's too good for anybody in the damn weight class. He's too complete of a fighter. Um, I think the only person that has a chance of beating Gennady Golovkin is Father Time. No, no middleweight beating Gennady Golovkin until Father Time hits him. So with that being said, the, what to me, what Jacobs represents for me is, you know, the first guy in a while at middleweight. Because if, if you look at it, right, Jacobs is going to represent somebody who's has, you know, when you look at what could be Golovkin, you want you you would like you would like someone with a deep, deep amateur, amateur pedigree. Jacobs checks that box up. He has a pretty good amateur background. You know, he also has the. Power as being in natural middleweight, you know, he has a pretty high knockout percentage. He's almost in the 90 percentile as well with his knockout. So, Amherst pedigree, power, he has that. Can does he have speed and athleticism? Yes, he does. He has those things. So, I'm looking at Daniel Jacobs as the most well versed fighter, not just from a standpoint of his physical attributes or his boxing skills, but just some of the intangible things. I feel like his mental makeup is is going to be there on on the night. Now, how, how much, how much, how much of his mental, how much will our mental makeup help him once he gets touched with a couple of Golovkin jabs or a right hand or a left hook? We don't know, but he seems to have all the makings of of of, of one of his toughest tests to date. Um, but it's not so much you know the fact that his mental makeup is is great enough like that. I think he's gonna get destroyed. I think I think he's gonna, he's gonna lose to Golovkin not because he's a bad fighter or like that. I just think Golovkin is that much better than anybody, and he's gonna have to make me a believer in him before I really. Um, you know, get I get behind. Him. I don't. I don't believe anybody, not just him. Anybody in the weight class can be Golovkin until Father Time hits him, and that's why Canelo's waiting so long. But you know, you look at 17 title defenses without this fight. 17 title defenses. That's that that that's historically great. Seven of those. I know seven of those or six of those 17 defenses. That's almost a third of the defenses are against top 10 opponents, top 10 middleweights. Uh, if you factor in Brooke, that's still seven opponents. Seven of the seventeen are, are top level opponents, and then you have you know Monroe, Rubio, still decent top fifteen guys. So nine of the seventeen or eight of the seventeen middleweight opponents, guys who are natural, the guys who fight at middleweight, um, eight of the seventeen were top fifteen guys. With factor in Brooke, it's, that makes it nine. So Golovkin's been just steamrolling those guys. That's seventeen title defenses, twenty three straight knockouts. Uh, on pace to set a new record at, at middleweight uh, for title defenses, the highest KO percentage in middleweight boxing history, which is no small feat. And um, you know he might be in line for the Canelo fight this year if that fight happens, and he, be, and he beats Canelo soundly like most of us think he will. You know that's got to make him pound pound number one uh, later on. But as far as right now in the in the here as as, Mar as far as as I'm talking right now, March tenth, two forty six a.m. If Golovkin has a more sensational performance. Um, then Chocolatito on March 18th, next Saturday, eight days from now. He's number one in boxing, and I know a lot of you guys. That's kind of hard to swallow because a lot of you guys hate Golovkin. 
You think he's a higher job. You think he hasn't fought nobody. But I just laid the facts out there for you. Six top ten middleweights at the time he fought them. With Kelbrook being the number one welterweight, you know, that's that's still seven top level, top ten people he's fought. And then if you factor in Rubio and um, Monroe, that's what, nine, nine, top nine of his 17 title defenses were against top 15 opponents. So you can't, you can't, you can't get too mad at Golovkin. I think a lot of people, people's problem with him is, you know, that he's making it look so easy. It's kind of like, you know, people don't like Mayweather. Mayweather. I mean, I can say what I want about Mayweather. I'm saying people don't like Mayweather, but Mayweather made, made, made a lot of those fights look easy. And did he always fight? The best fighters, no. But when it came time to make the big fights, he, you know, he made he made a couple of them. I'm not gonna say all of them. There was a lot of fights he didn't make. That's been documented. But he did fight Cotto. I thought I thought that was a quality win by him. Very quality win by him because because he had to actually show some stuff in that fight. When he fought Canelo, he, all he was green. Master class performance. So th- there's always gonna be issues when you're one of the top fighters in boxing. Fans will always nitpick because boxing's a very fans of the sport are very passionate. And, and and there's always it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a not only are fans passionate you know I, I believe boxing fans is there might not be as many boxing fans as other sports but I believe the passion of boxing fans is, is unmatched in any sport Bo- when you, when somebody says they're a boxing fan you know that they're astute that they actually care about the sport that they pay, they pay attention to the details so you know boxing fans um, are the most passionate fans in sports. That's number one. Number two, aside from that, boxing is a, a subjective sport. So when you mix it to the fact that boxing is a subjective sport and that the fans are some of the most passionate in the world, it always makes for debate. It always makes for uh, arguments. But I, th- 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 to me, if he stops Daniel Jacobs in impressive fashion, there is legit, like, and, and, and I preface that by saying that if he does that and Chocolatito doesn't match his performance, if he's able to do that, then um, you know you can't you can't say that he's not the pound for pound best fighter in boxing because no disrespect to anybody else, but there's nobody dominating a weight class like Lovkin. There's nobody with 17 title defenses. There's nobody with a 92 percent knockout percentage. The only guy with a higher knockout percentage is Deontay Wilder, and Wilder's fighting for the most part just bums. He ain't fighting nobody. He fought Chris Ariola. Uh, he fought, uh, you know, um, I mean, he got a good win against Joe Washington, but for the most part, Deontay Wilder has fought nobodies. Cans, okay. He needs to go step up his opposition. All right? So that's what it is, man. I mean, a couple of those guys were top 10 guys. So you give him credit for a couple wins. But Wilder is still with 40 fights in. For 40, almost damn near 40 fights. Hasn't really been fighting anybody. Meanwhile, Golovkin is testing himself. You know, stepping it up a little bit more as the fights go on. I know last year he really he fought a mandatory and he fought a welterweight. So you, you, you can give him a little flack for last year. But now he's, he's, he's making it up by fighting the, the highest rated middleweight outside of himself. And either his next fight is either going to be for the un- for, against Billy Joe Saunders for the undisputed title, and or it's going to be against Canelo. So we'll see what happens, man. He's got some big things planned out, planned this year, and um, I feel that this year, you know, Golovkin's obviously boxing fans know who he is, and some casual fans know who he is, but he's still unknown to a lot of people in this country of America. I think this is the year right here. This year, 2017, is the year that Golovkin becomes a breakout star, star because of the Canelo fight happening. And the Jacobs fight and potentially become undisputed. You know, there, 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 there's a lot that comes with being undisputed and undefeated. A lot, you know, a lot, when, when you're undisputed and undefeated, you know, that, that there's a certain respect that comes comes with that. Even if people don't really know who, who you are at that moment in time, so I think Lovekin will become that. I think, um, you know, there's there's a case for him right now being number one fighter in boxing that, that you can make over Chocolatito, but. Um, I had Chocolatito slightly ahead of Gennady, and for people who have Chocolatito slightly ahead of Gennady, that week, Mar- that day, March 18th, will, de- will determine who is the pound for pound king in boxing. So who is going to have the better performance? Will it be Chocolatito Gonzalez against the Thailand guy who's, who I believe is ranked fourth on the ring magazine, or will it be Gennady Golovkin against Daniel Jacobs? You know, That remains to be seen, but I think if Golovkin can go in there and be his usual, sensational, dominant self against J- uh, uh you know the, the Brooklyn Knight and Daniel Jacobs, then he's got a major chance uh, to be crowned pound for pound king by, by not just myself but many people in boxing. So let me know what you guys think. If, if Gennady Golovkin goes in there and destroys Daniel Jacobs, like many people think he will, do you ele- elevate him to number one pound for pound, or do you have number one pound for pound already? Let me know what you think in the comments down below. And if you don't think Gennady Golovkin will be pound for pound number one after this fight, what does he have to do to become the pound for pound king in boxing? Leave your comments down below. Take the time to subscribe, and you can love me or you can hate me, but I'm just here from Daniel. So until next time, 
Take care, guys.